Alfredo Behans for his talk on leadership for resilience and sustainability post-COVID and other matters. Alfredo. Well, thank you, Globin, for inviting me. It, it is a pleasure. It is a pleasure to be with such distinguished uh, professionals here. Uh, and I loved uh, listening to your presentations uh, up to now. Uh, Mahinder gave us a big picture one. Tridip gave us a more focused one. I will discuss uh, the, not the next year, not the next two, three years, but perhaps three to five years in uh, the type of leadership that we need in order to move forward. We need to understand what worked properly now in order to understand what leverage we will have in the future. And there is a role for business schools as well in order to provide the leadership that at this moment many corporations have lacked. So this is what I will focus on. Uh, it, it is a difficult topic, but it's a fun one. <laughs> and I would love to answer the questions that you may have later on. Let me see. Uh, uh, the, the countries that did better uh, were the ones that had politicians that asked people to collaborate. They coalesced the people uh, together to bring them to better, and the people responded. These were countries like Korea, Germany, Japan, New Zealand, Uruguay, all across the globe. What these leaders had in common was that they asked people to collaborate. Now, the societies that were polarized before this event of the pandemic, those didn't do as well. And there is a reason for it, you know. Uh, some of these, the ones that did worst, for example, Belgium, <laughs> Spain, United Kingdom, Italy, these were countries that before the pandemic had great difficulty even in forming a government. So you wouldn't expect them to be very effective when the pandemic struck. Uh, then you have the case of the USA, major power in the world, but it comes out ninth in terms of effectiveness. So uh, there is a lesson there. Uh, we, we had leaders that were more effective than others, and those leaders that were more effective were calling for collaboration. So uh, the struggle of against the COVID-19 was largely a struggle for our politicians and scientists. Those were the ones that provided us the leadership. But it's strange because we had very few corporations giving us an idea of where we were and where we were heading. Uh, I remember John Biles and Bob Dylan, you know, lately a Nobel Prize, but he had this song, Where Have All the Flowers Gone? Well, actually, most of the leaders of the very large corporations disappeared during the pandemic. Uh, uh, and these were leaders of very large corporations. I mean, Apple's earnings yearly are larger than the whole GDP of Portugal. Volkswagen larger than Chile, Walmart larger than Belgium, Amazon larger even than Kuwait. But yet these leaders did not come forth. And this is something that we have to think about because we were left with the old politicians and the scientists to get back. So there is something that we have not been doing properly in terms of management. We would expect that corporations which are so large would be led by people that have something in mind besides, you know, speaking about performance, about earnings before and after taxes or after depreciation or interest payments. There is much more for us to be working for than just, you know, the standard fare of performance. So. Uh, let us go back to why these leaders came into position in that way. Uh, if we think when all this started, and I'm not going to go all the way back to the Egyptians and wherever, no, no, it's uh, Gutenberg with mobile, t mobile types and his printing press. They, these parts have one advantage, they are interchangeable. And so the Americans picked it up after a long time. You know, Thomas Jefferson was present in Paris when this system was presented by armors to make weapons. So this competition by costs uh, and by standardizing products is what made America so effective. They were willing to try new methods of production. They got off their feet and went on and doing it. But the standardization as a paradigm for interchangeable parts may have gone too far. So this is why we started getting templates so how people should dress up in order to go to work. Uh, because people had to be standardized. There was no need for that, but you know, the way that people looked 
uh, was better. And they ended up looking all very much like the same. <laughs> It's pretty hard to distinguish one from the other, except for the colors of their tides. Huh? And that's not, that shouldn't be like that. So essentially what happened was the whole paradigm of interchangeable parts split over to human resource management. So now the problem was quite simple. We know the jobs that are necessary, that are on offer, the skills that we need to fill them up. So let's fit in the puzzle and getting the people together in a corporation allowed them becoming very standardized to also be very mobile because a national market was created for labor. So the workers became very mobile. Now that is a crucial aspect that we have to think about because if they were mobile they could leave the city that they were born in. And if they left the city, they might not leave with the whole family. And looking for the best prospects of their performance and earnings, they would move away. So loyalty was fractured. Loyalty to the place, loyalty to the co-workers, eventually even loyalty to the family. This has been going on for a long time. It's not all recent. Uh, this is why I took the trouble to figure it out since when uh, treason, <laughs> has become no less important. Fraud has become less important. It, the importance of these uh, terms, treason and fraud, have been declining systematically since the 18th century. It's not as important now as it used to be before. Dante had put uh, treason in the lowest of all circles of hell. But now it's not more important than gluttony is. So there has been a drop in values, of societal values, of what address the need to collaborate rather than to take advantage of the others. So I think that the whole system of management has run its, its period. It's over. I mean, uh, look at the American artists as good as Hopper or Wythe. They decried loneliness of the American. They moved away to friends, huh? and, and then they started forgetting about their families. And grannies were being dumped. They are still being dumped. A 1992 article in the New York Times has that title: "Grannies being dumped by the thousands." And so sociologists started pointing out: Listen, Americans are bowling alone. There are no more leagues now. They don't enjoy unions. They don't enjoy the Parents Teacher Association anymore. In 1971, a film director produced this film uh, in which you had people shooting randomly, people that were on the way to the groceries. And it was a black comedy, but we never imagined that it would be so prescient what happened later. Mass murders becoming more frequent and more lethal than ever before. Now, if you can escape the shooting, you might have to choose being committing suicide because what has been happening is that the people that felt left out from this phenomenal growth have been committing suicide at a rate that was not expected and particularly during their more productive years left out in despair they commit suicide they opt out now this is a very important signal that something is very wrong this is what, uh, in, in the time of the colonization of the Americas, uh, slaves would do to the children. They would kill them because they thought that that was not a worth living. And now we are back to the same, but not only in the States, because what happens is that when you give precedence to performance and productivity, then you leave many people behind. And it's happening, of course, in India as well, where you have uh, the drop in the income from farmers have led to their uh, choice of also opting out and at the same age uh, bracket of the Americans who are committing suicide. And these should be our most productive age. So you see, a system of production and organization for production has have this trait. You can't choose the system and own by only one side of it. The awesome uh, fabulous progress that we have enjoyed uh, in technology for the last 200 years. It came with all these downsides as well. So what we have to think is what kind of new normal do we want for the future? Uh, because we, the whole issue now is building back better. 
Mahinder mentioned of the need for governance. Uh, and yes, yes, but this also means that we need to treat people in a different way, select them in a different way. Uh, because if you are aware in the US now, which Trudeau was presenting us this uh, picture of, black people uh, become less hospitalized and they die more than white people. No, that, that's not fair, is it? And if on top of that we see that a black person has been killed by a white police officer kneeling on his neck, well, obviously that creates a lot of anger, right? And, and this anger has consequences. And corporations that were not uh, available to give us any solace or guidance during the COVID-19 saw this and decided, oh, oh we've got a Band-Aid. <laughs> now, now, pay attention, because Johnson & Johnson had put out these colorful Band-Aids in 2015, but they thought it was not worth it. But they took chance of this moment and saying, oh, we have to do something about it. Okay, fine, it's good. Uh, now we have colors of band-aids to choose from. But it, it's, it doesn't really look very well. Uh, and it's surprising that after two centuries of phenomenal growth, the issue of color is still with us, as if production was geared more for making profits than actually satisfying people's needs. It was okay at the beginning of the last century if Ford would only produce black cars, but now producing only pink band-aids doesn't make any more sense than it did. So these are the issues that we have to look at uh, because we are producing in our business schools uh, people that would lead these industries for the future. It's pretty hard to produce anything, of course I know it, to innovate even harder, but it doesn't seem that we are producing the leaders who we would like to have. What we need to understand is that competition within uh, organizations fractures them, uh, and that it produces the type of bosses uh, that lead fractious organizations. And perhaps this is why we heard so little of them when we needed them most, and we were left with the politicians and the scientists to lead us. So what I would like to call is the possibility of looking deeper into what we have available in each one of our societies and see which are the examples of collaboration that people love doing for very low pay. And we have the Mumbai Dabawalas. Uh, they have excellent performance and they sing while they work. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? And then you have the Palampuri Jains and the diamond trade. Uh, they, they, they actually don't have any written contracts, despite working in, with very high-value goods. They could disappear, but they don't, because people are trusted when they collaborate. And of course we have the, the Kolkata Durga Puja here, and many other Pujas in India. Uh, so with this message, I'm concluding with a more optimistic idea. Yes, we have had uh, difficulties, significant difficulties in combating COVID. And we were left mostly with scientists and politicians to deal with it. Corporations were very absent. And when they became present, they didn't in the way that we would expect. Unilever now in India is phasing out its fair and, fair and beautiful, I think it's called, and in order to give you a whiter skin. Now, uh, these are simply opportunistic moves. We need deeper understanding that in order to build a better world together, to build back better, we need more collaboration than our forms of producing have produced up to now. So these are the things that I would like to leave you in, in your mind and just leave it to my colleagues uh, to discuss later if you have questions. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Alfredo. It was a lovely presentation, quite a departure, and it was a very easy and a very easy sounding and a very understandable one.